Your first assignment in Max is going to be to make some sound using only this very, very limited collection of Max objects. Um, and so what I'm going to do right here is for those people who are absolute beginners with Max, show how to build this simple Max patch, which just plays a sign tone and lets you change its frequency and its amplitude. So for this, we're going to be using the cycle tilde object, which generates a cosine waveform or a sinusoidal shaped waveform. We're going to be using the easy DAC tilde object, which is basically the output to the speakers uh, and also serves as an on off switch. Uh, we'll be using the floating number point, floating point number box uh, called FlowNum to provide numerical information such as the frequency number and the amplitude number and we'll be using the times object uh, for multiplying uh, the sinusoidal wave by a particular amplitude value that we specify, thus turning it louder or softer. And we'll use the scope tilde just to look at what's coming up. So I'm going to basically just build this thing that's on the left here uh, in the untitled window on the right. Notice that I have the max console window open on the right also. It's a good idea always to have that open when you're using Max because it will uh, show you error messages if you do anything uh, egregious. Okay, so uh, to make a new object, you can grab something from these various palettes here, but the way that I usually do it, being a power user, is to uh, uh, simply click where I want the object to be and then type the letter N for new and it creates an empty object box waiting me for me to type something in. Now even if the uh, thing that you want to create is what's called a user interface object, the thing that's not just an object box but actually has some sort of graphical interface for the user, you can still just type the name in. Like I can type in EZD and it already recognizes, because there's only one object name that starts with those letters, that I want an easy DAC tilde object. So then I just have to hit return and it creates the object for me. Uh, the other thing that I'll need is a cycle tilde object. I'm going to create one of those. So I type the letter N and the cycle tilde. You might notice that there are several objects that have the word cycle in them. Uh, we definitely want the one with the tilde, so I'll go down and click here and then hit return. And there we go. Uh, now by default, this cycle tilde object doesn't have a frequency, or rather its frequency is zero hertz, which means it goes nowhere. Uh, so we're going to have to provide it some kind of a frequency information, but for now uh, it's, it's still capable of generating something, it's just something that doesn't go anywhere. Um, let's, just for the fun of it, let's first make that scope object, scope tilde, by typing N and then scope tilde, hit return, and I'm going to connect the cycle tilde by clicking on its outlet to the inlet, the left inlet of the scope tilde, just by dragging over there and clicking again. Now, up here in the options, I have segmented patch chords selected, which means that you don't have to make only uh, straight line patch chords or single patch chords, but you can actually make ones that are made up of several line segments to bend them. Uh, so that's why my patch chord looks straight, and that's why I have to click once on the inlet and once on the outlet to create the patch chord. And then once it's created, I can, in the arrange menu, say auto align that patch chord and it makes it into segments that makes it all neat and tidy for me. I'm anal retentive, so I like to do that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But now if I turn audio on and off, and before I do that, I have to do what's called locking the patcher. So I have to click here on the little lock icon to lock it. Now it's in running mode rather than editing mode. If I unlock it, it's back in editing mode and I can make changes to it. Another way you can do that is with the command E command. So if I do command E, it puts it in locked uh, running mode. And then if I do command E again, it puts it in uh, editing mode again. But I want it in running mode, so I'm going to lock the patcher and I'm going to hit the on off button. And first thing you'll notice is that this scope doesn't show much of anything. And that's because this is at zero hertz and it starts here at the value one. So we're just seeing a straight line going across. But the other thing you might notice is that the other windows responded to 
that click at the same time. So by turning audio on and off with the easy DAC tilde object, I'm actually turning audio on and off for every open window in Max. So if this patch were to make some sound, uh, that would interfere with what I'm trying to do over here. Fortunately, it has a frequency of zero and an amplitude of zero, so it's not making any sound. You can see what the output is right here. It's nothing, which is what we want. And over here, the output is a constant value of one, which is also fairly useless. It doesn't sound like much of anything to us. But what I'm going to do next is go back into edit mode and create a flowNum object, which actually you don't need to do the type n and then type in flowNum, you can just type the letter f, which is a shortcut for the flowNum object. There it is. I connect the output of the flowNum to the inlet of the cycle. And the inlet of the cycle, you can see by the little info tag that comes up there, is for specifying the frequency of the sine wave. So that's the perfect place for this number box. And now if I lock again and enter a number here, which I can do by dragging up like that, I now have a 3 hertz sine wave, uh, meaning that it's a sinusoid that's repeating three times per second. Fascinating. Still not audible to us for two reasons. One reason is that uh, I haven't connected it to the output yet uh, intentionally, so that we don't get bothered by its sound. But then the other is that it's uh, too low a frequency for us to actually hear speakers will be vibrating back and forth three times per second, but that's not audible to us in any significant way. So um, one thing that I'll point out here is that if I start to increase it up to an audible frequency, you can see that at a certain point, the display of the scope becomes fairly useless. Um, and that's because we've got, what, maybe a couple hundred pixels worth of area here, and we're trying to represent uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of samples with that um, and the 93 hertz sine wave uh, has a lot of changes that go on within one second and we can't possibly represent that in the space of this scope so it doesn't look good anymore but you saw when we were back at a low frequency which I can also do by just typing in the low frequency number there and hitting return um, you can see that it is a sinusoid and as I get faster and faster it gets to be more and more of them per unit of time until eventually it's so many that it doesn't look like anything. But at this point it will sound like something because we're up in the audible range. 440 of course being the range at which uh, the orchestra tunes, the A above little c. Okay, so uh, now before we connect it to the output, if we did connect it to the output, it would be at full volume because by default the cycle tilde object uh, has a range from negative 1 to 1. In other words, it occupies the full uh, loudness range that the DAC is capable of, of uh, managing. Um, but we probably want to have some control over the loudness before we do that, just as we do in this part of the program. So let's, first of all, turn audio off. Let's unlock the window, and let's uh, create a times object. And to do that, again, I'm just going to click the uh, N key, type in the asterisk, which in programming languages substitutes for uh, the X that's usually used for multiplication in math because X could also be used as a variable or a letter. So just to avoid confusion, they use an asterisk in programming languages for times. And then the tilde to indicate that we want to multiply uh, an audio signal. And so when we send the cycle into that, it's saying every single sample of this sinusoidal waveform should get multiplied by whatever number I specify in this before it gets passed out. Okay, and now I can take the output of that and connect it to the DAC. I can connect it to the left channel, and I can also connect it to the right channel, so we'll hear it in both of our ears. And uh, um, that takes care of that, but we still need to provide some sort of uh, numerical value by which you want to multiply. If no number is provided, it's going to multiply by zero, which will completely turn this sinusoid down to zero. And we can verify that by getting another scope tilde over here and seeing what's coming out of the multiply object. Uh, you can actually option drag on an object in Max to create a duplicate, just like you can in things like Photoshop. So if I hold down the option key and drag this over here, 
I have a new scope object, and I can connect the output of the times tilde to that. And now if I lock the window, and we can see that there's this 440 hertz sine wave going great guns over here, but every single sample of it is getting multiplied by this constant value of zero. So here's what the output looks like, and that's what we hear. Still hearing nothing. Okay, but now finally we can do something we want uh, to do, which is put in a number box, a float number box, that will allow us to supply some number other than zero. Notice that I stretch this times object out to the right by dragging on its grow box so that it lined up with that. Again, just my anal retentive way of doing things. And now if I lock the patch, turn it on, we're still hearing nothing. But if I drag on the right side of the flow num object over here in the decimal portion, like the hundreds, co hundredths column over here, or the thousandths column, you can see that even as I just get us up to about 2% amplitude, and you can see it's a tiny little waveform there, but it's audible to us. We're quite capable of hearing that. And if we bring it up to about 0.25, it's now, for me anyway, getting kind of loud. And you have additional ways to control things, of course. You can turn down the volume of your computer if you want. Or you can even control it over here. They give you an additional little gain knob over here on the window. But I'm just going to use only this to control the volume just so that we can really hear the differences. I can turn it back down to zero here. And if I go into negative amplitudes, what's going to happen? Well, in fact, we're still going to hear it, and the reason is because it's multiplying it by a negative number, which just flips it upside down. But we can't tell the difference auditorily, so it still sounds the same. So that's a useful thing to think about when you're in listening land over here. Um, multiplying something by a negative amplitude is really just the same as multiplying it by a, a positive amplitude, except you're flipping the waveform upside down, um, which, as I said, is kind of meaningless to us auditorily. So really, you want the value of zero if you want to turn it down to nothing, and I can do that just by uh, typing in number zero and hitting return. Now, the one other thing I'm going to demonstrate with this amplitude is if I go beyond one, what I'll really be doing then is taking the amplitude beyond what the DAC is capable of handling so that the waveform is actually going like this. And what's going to happen as a result is that the waveform gets chopped off by the DAC. It gets up here and then it gets clipped and left at one. Then when it comes back down, it gets to here, it gets clipped. So we actually get something that's more like a square wave than a sine wave. And you're going to hear the difference in the sense that uh, the uh, timbre is going to change. Suddenly, because it's a distorted sine wave, it's no longer a pure sinusoidal sound of one frequency. It actually has more harmonic content. It has other partials in the sound. Uh, it's going to sound much richer. I'm going to turn this down so that I can go to beyond full volume without killing our ears. But I am going to turn it up beyond full volume here. and Let's see how that sounds once we get to the value of 1. It's all fine. Still fine. Now here we go beyond one. Oh, I fooled myself because the fact that I turned it down here means it's not clipped. So the fact that I had turned it down here meant that it was actually doing an additional multiplication to turn it down. So even though I was pushing it to clipping over here, this knob was keeping it from actually clipping. But when I put that back to a normal setting and I go beyond one, OK, 
Okay, so that's enough of that demo. All of these other things here are just comments. They're things that allow us to put notes into the uh, patch, and I'll do just one of those to show you. You just go here, you type the letter C for comment, you type in the thing you want to comment. You can, even if you want, do, what is it, uh, fix the width of the comment. So it will automatically fix the width of the comment down to the width of my text. Uh, it's another anal retentive thing that I sometimes do, but the, uh, it doesn't really matter because once I lock the patch, the borders of the comment go away and it just becomes a word by itself. It doesn't do anything, of course, other than give you information. Okay, so that's how that patch works. Um, it looks pretty much like that one and does exactly the same stuff. Um, that's it for this little video.